it was the early 80s and in the early 80s many of you who had a little age on you in the early 80s an ongoing and popular story in the news was gang violence. In the 80s and probably going into the 90s in order for us to get street credibility in order for us to try to give ourselves some kind of value many of us sisters and brothers turn to crime many of us because of family dysfunction many of us because we we broke couldn't find jobs. We turned to criminal activity and many of us, we found family. We found purpose. We found a place of being in gangs. And of course, the two most popular if you want to say that, if the two most known gangs come from out of California, we have the Bloods and the Crips. And so, all over this nation, wherever you find in the soul community or black community, you will find gang activity and gang activity would take advantage of the despair and the hopelessness in our communities and they would fulfill a need a need of escapism some of us would go to church to escape some of us would go to the liquor store to escape Many of us turn to crack cocaine and heroin and other drugs of that nature. Knowing this, there were people who, who supplied these needs. The same way they supply the love of Jesus. The same way they supply uh, cigarettes and alcohol. Somebody found a way to supply these things. And with gang activity came violence, fighting over territory and whatnot. No different than the Italian mob or any of these other criminal organizations. Whether, whether uh, you also had Haitians involved and even right now, you have Haitians involved in gang activity. You have Mexicans involved in the gang activity and these cartels and so forth. But in the 80s, it became among the children, younger people, if you want street credibility or you just want to be look like you're tough, you want to be a thug, be affiliate yourself with a gang. So we had uh, the Bloods and the Crips, which were large, known to us gangs, but there were also other smaller gangs. Everybody in their mama wanted to try to start a gang. So here I am in the 80s, opposite of the coin, and I'm running around trying to convince the brothers and the sisters there's a better way. So I wear my bow tie 
And I have my, I don't have a gun, I have my, my Final Call newspaper, I have the truth, I have the backing of Almighty God Allah with me. And by myself, not with other fruit of Islam, other brothers, I will go out by myself because I was taught to fear no God but Allah. And Allah will protect me. And I believe that. And I'll go out by myself. Who knows what could have happened to me. But I did it. And I survived. <laughs> I, I, that's what I've done. I survived. So one day. There was these brothers. Drinking. And you know how we do on the corner. And I'm promoting this final call newspaper I'm telling them about Allah I'm, I'm telling them about how they should listen to the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan and all like this and of course they basically are, are laughing and one of the brothers told me do I understand that I'm talking to you know a, a gang it wasn't the Crips or the Bloods I don't know what gang 49 Street Disciples, I think that's what they was calling themselves. I'm not really sure. 49 Street Disciples, I believe that's what they called themselves. But the conversation that I had with them was good. It was civil. Except one brother, he didn't want to hear all that religion, black brotherhood crap. And I asked them, who was, is there a leader? Is there somebody? Is any of them? They said no. I said, could I talk to your, you know, to the brother that y'all uh, follow? You know, who's the leader? And of course, the brother that didn't really like what I was talking about, he wasn't into that. But the other brother said, yeah, you know, it'll be fun. Let's, you know. Now here I am. I'm going to a, with strange people to a strange place. Who knows what the hell could have happened to me? I'm not tripping. I'm. Only thing I'm thinking about pushing this program, pushing Islam, pushing God. That's all on my mind. So they took me to meet this brother. We had a who is this? You know. And I'm in my bow tie. They used to brothers in their bow ties running around. Selling pies and bean pies and whatever they, but I'm bold enough to come here and talk to them like this by myself. What the hell is this? What the hell is this problem? And myself, and I'm talking to the brother who's the the leader and his girlfriend, and we actually was having a real nice conversation. But the brother that didn't like all to hear all that crap. He all of a sudden pulled a gun. I, I guess it was a 22. i I'm not familiar with this small handgun. And he had put it to my head. I'm tired of listening to this bush. Nigga, mom, I don't want to hear that crap. I'll blow your brains out right now. What your Allah going to do, Nick, Nick? You know, that's how he was rolling. And I'm really shocked myself to relive this memory. I was not scared. I told the man, and mind you, I'm in my 20s. We're all young people here. We're all 19, 20 some year old people. They're, they're 17, 19, early 20s. I'm probably 19, 20. I'm in my probably my early 20s also. What your God gonna do? And I told him, hey, I don't. Only thing I know, bro, you probably doing me a favor. I don't have to worry about none of this no more. You have to live and keep watching over your shoulder, looking for the police and trying to survive. You probably doing me a favor. I don't even care. And I, I, I've done what I'm supposed to do to bring you brothers and sisters the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Then the brother, like, eh, ugh, he. But the brother that was the leader, I guess.
guess he sort of took a shine and he he liked how I was approached, you know, interacting with them. And I was a minister in training at the time. My only time. I probably was a minister in training for one month. And I invited the brothers and the sisters from this gang. Of course, that one brother didn't come to the temple, but I was shocked. The brother and his girlfriend and a couple other members came to the to the temple. And uh, they listened. And the first brother got on the the platform and talking all this tough stuff or whatever. And I was the main speaker for that day. And they listened to what we had to say. And after the meeting, the brother told me, man, you cool, but them cats you with, they ain't real. Oh, mm. He said, they're not real. You know somebody when they not real because they got to go all out their way huffing and puffing and showing how tough they are and whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm bold enough by myself to go into a house with gang members and I don't know what the hell going to happen to me. They come because they like me and they listen to my brothers in the temple and call them fake. Why am I telling us this story? You have a lot of folks on YouTube. You have a lot of folks on social media. And you listen to them. And they talk. Tough. And they sound tough. And they puff up their chest and whatever. But they're not real. I'm not looking for your money. I'm not looking for fame and fortune. I am here because you deserve better. And we need to change our condition. What do they say? Real recognize real. And those brothers and sisters. I don't know where they are at today. But that was something else. When that brother told me that, he said, they fake. And I began to see certain things myself. Putting on a show. <clears throat> the Holy Quran says this. Don't think that you will say you believe and not be tried. Somebody going to pull your whole card. Somebody going to call your bluff when you come out here acting like you're so tough and you're going to do this and blah, blah, blah. Somebody going to pull your whole card. All these scam artists and all these people getting over. One of these days, if you live, Somebody going to pull these people. And you're going to pay. For scamming the people. Deceiving the people. And not being real. You're going to pay. Whether you're sincere or not sincere. Taking thousands of dollars. And time and money. Away from us as a people. Knowing you can't do a damn thing for nobody. Liberation is not. Edutainment. Revolution is not entertainment. It is not a YouTube channel. There's only two people in this world. Either you're real or you're fake. 